What's up, Cameron? What are you doing online so late? Hey, Nate. I'm working on the layout for this week's paper. No one ever expected the basketball team to win last night. But now, we're headed to the championship, which means we've got a new story to add. What are you working on? I'm still tweaking my recycling article. I know you're busy, but do you have a few minutes to read over it with me? Sure. I need to take a little break from basketball anyway. How's it coming along? I've been working really hard on it. I've done a lot of research, joined a writing group, and revised my initial draft. But I figured the editor of the school newspaper would have a few pointers and positive suggestions for me. No problem. Send it over. We're excited to print your editorial. You know, I think we're going to run it on the opinion page of next week's paper. Really? Hold that thought. Will Nate's article make the editorial page or get cut? Will the game-winning layup upset the newspaper's layout for Cameron? First, check out the plastic plight and wilderness waste to see the first steps of the writing process. And then join the knowledge seekers as they explore revision in this episode of Thinking Aloud. While the knowledge seekers chat about Nate's editorial, we need to understand that writing is a process, and revision is important in that process. Revision means to look again at your work with a fresh critical eye. It's an ongoing process of refining your purpose, reorganizing ideas, reviewing evidence, reconsidering arguments, and refreshing the text by using more vivid words. As you incorporate these changes, you complete a draft that is stronger than the one before. The cycle continues until you have conveyed your message clearly. It's important to ask yourself questions while revising. What is my purpose? Does my introduction clearly state what I want to do? Is my writing focused? Do I stay on topic? Is my writing organized and well-structured? Will the reader find it easy to follow? Have I provided the right amount of information? And is it accurate? Does my use of voice engage readers and hold their attention? Will they want to keep reading? Have I provided a strong conclusion that leaves the reader satisfied? Skillful authors revise their work in four ways. By rearranging sentences or sections of the piece. Substituting words that make their writing more vivid or clear. Adding more information to strengthen weak areas. And by removing words, sentences, or paragraphs that seem unnecessary. Let's check back in with Nate and Cameron to see what questions they're asking and what revisions they're making to the editorial. I just sent you the list of revision questions that are posted here in our newsroom. I make a point of going over the list during each round of my revisions. Got it. These questions look good. My purpose is to motivate students to avoid using plastic water bottles. And your writing seems very focused. You do a good job of staying on topic. Thanks. But I'm wondering if my writing is organized and well-structured. I'm thinking my second paragraph seems a bit wordy. Try reading it aloud. Okay. Sure, doctors tell us to drink more liquids and to hydrate whenever we feel thirsty and it's convenient, but by following those simple orders, we have conveniently added to a mountain of waste by drinking from disposable plastic containers. Therefore, convenience is the issue. It's the plastic containers that are the problem. <laughs> I think you're right. You did mention some form of the word convenient three times. I can get rid of a couple of those. And I'll rearrange the paragraph by switching the last two sentences. Nate and Cameron know that skillful authors read their work aloud. They're listening to Nate's editorial for hiccuping or stumbling, which may signal that the section needs to be reworked. Let's see. Is there enough information? I think so. I really like your sentence about the plastic vortex, but where did you get your information? Whoops, I forgot to attribute the source right in the article. Let me add that. Using credible sources helps your readers know your information is accurate. Is my voice engaging to the reader? Hmm. <laughs> Definitely. 
Your passion really comes through in your writing when you challenge your readers to do their part by buying refillable canteens. Thanks. But I think I need to strengthen my conclusion. I do want it to stand out. If I take the last sentence and make it stand alone as its own paragraph, it will focus the reader's attention on how they can help in a small but significant way. There. The reusable canteens will be on sale at the school store starting tomorrow and could be the best $3.50 you spend all year. Cool. You see how revising helps? We're always revising here at the newspaper. The layout of every issue goes through a process of rearranging, substituting, adding, and removing. Just like you have been doing with your editorial. We also encourage our writers to ask themselves these key revision questions when working on their articles. Maybe I could write a weekly column on recycling. Let's just get this editorial printed first. These are guidelines that can help writers advance their work. Not all these strategies work for every writer, every time. In fact, revision is not always necessary. Sometimes, writings are so well researched, planned and rehearsed that the author gets it right the first time. However, this doesn't happen often. Most drafts require at least some revision before the final draft is complete. Remember that revision is an opportunity to improve. Keep writing, rewriting and thinking aloud.